Welcome to the channel, family. This is each one, reach one. I pray and hope that you guys are all well and that I can teach and reach one of you with this lesson. Lord willing, of course, all praise, honor, and glory to the heavenly highest, our Father, Yahweh, in the name of our beloved King, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. I pray that we all today might be increased in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and be caused to abound in the fruits of the spirit. We are here to help serve a notice of caution to those who consider themselves or believe themselves to be prophets, as well as a bit of a, a warning to those who, who follow those who deem themselves to be prophets. All right. So, you know, without further ado, we're going to get into it. This is very important to cover. We have to understand what the Most High has done in order to understand what he can do and what he will do in order to understand, you know, what he might do or what he may be doing in the earth right now and in your lives, okay? So everything in the scriptures was written for our learning. What did you learn from the things that were written? That's the key. So we're gonna begin in 1 Kings chapter 13. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. All right. So out of the gate, establishing, there comes a man of God. Out of Judah, by the word of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, unto Bethel. So this is a man being sent by the Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai. All right. He's being commissioned by our Heavenly Power to go pronounce a word. All right. And he cried against the altar in the word of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold. The altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it in again to him. The altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of Yahweh thy power, and pray for me that my hand may be restored again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again and became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, come home with me and refresh thyself and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, if thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was it charged me by the word of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. This, now, this is the very important part of what we're getting into. For it was charged me by the word of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. He was meaning he was given a direct commandment. He was told explicitly, eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. So far, so good. He's following instructions. He's following the commandments given him directly from on high. All right. He's following the word of the Lord. Okay. Now, there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. Uh-oh. There dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. Now. You can visualize this old prophet 
as one of these modern day prophets today who like to, you know, disrespectfully refer to those of us who wake who awakened after them as Johnny come lately's is what they call us because they boast and take pride in being awakened first as if there's some sort of glory in that like there's some sort of special prize waiting for them for that like there's some sort of higher station assigned to them for that <laughs> they like the glory and awakening before you so these old prophets Believe they know it all. Believe they know it, know it, the scriptures better. Believe they know more than you do because they were awakened before you. This is an ignorant stance to take because nothing in the scriptures support that. And there's nothing in common sense that supports that either. It's just a wicked doctrine that they pass among each other to prop each other up and to make themselves look and feel special they got that same spirit of the pharisees that causes them to want to be revered and worshiped and highly regarded of the people all right so now there dwelt an old prophet in bethel and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of god had done that day in bethel the words which he had spoken unto the king them they told also to their father and their father said unto them, what way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass and he rode thereon. Listen to what's going on. He heard this report of a man of God out here doing works on behalf of the father, coming in the name of our power, commissioned to be a prophet, delivering a prophetic message and this old prophet did he just mind his business no did he say you know what good job for him that brother that's doing the work of the lord no he saddled up his ass and got on his way to try to intercept this prophet why why ever would he do this well let's find out so he saddled, saddled me the ass. So they saddled him the ass and he rode thereon and went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then said, then he said unto him, come home with me and eat bread. Now, remember, his prophet, the man of God, he was given explicit commands to follow, right? So why would this man who, who is referred to as the old prophet get on his animal, go travel to find this man in order to try to get this man to do opposite from the commands he was given? He doesn't know specifically, you know, the commands this man was given, but because he's being led of a spirit, a, a, a spirit of deception, a deceiving spirit is guiding this man to try and go and get this man to fall, to try to get him to, to be at odds with the, with the power that gave him instructions that he was supposed to follow because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? So he didn't logically understand what was going on or consciously know what was going on, but subconsciously and in his spirit, is being he's being moved by a spirit to try to get this man, the prophet of God, to fall short, to anger the most high God and to be destroyed by him because that's what these spirits are out here doing. All right. These wicked spirits, they have a job to do. And they're constantly trying to come against the true men of God, the men who are sent by the most high God to deliver a righteous message, to do a righteous work on his behalf. These wicked spirits are out here doing their job of trying to cause many to fall. All right, that's what they do. That's what's going on here. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread, nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, I was told directly 
by the word of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He spoke to me. He didn't send somebody else to come talk to me. He came and spoke to me. So I know that he'll speak to me. I know that he'll communicate to me. He has communicated to me directly and he gave me a direct command. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord saying, bring him back with thee into thine house that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. You see, this lion spirit came upon him and he fled his own home in haste, eager to help bring about the fall of a, of a man of God. And he's lying to him. Now, the brother's supposed to reason and say, mm -mm, nah, fam, like, the most I didn't send somebody else to come talk to me to come deliver the word that he had me send. So why would he send you to come speak to me to tell me to not listen to the commandments he gave me instead of coming to me himself the way he did the first time? He spoke to me. He communicated with me directly. Why would he now send you to come communicate with me? This seems like a trick. I'm not going for it. That's what he should have said. That's what he should have did. But what happened? So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. Yikes. He listened to a man and not to the spirit that came to him and not to the Holy Spirit led word of God. That's what he did. And we have a tendency to do that now. The Most High leads us via the Holy Spirit. And some of us, many of us, many of you, I don't want to include myself, many of you will disregard what the Spirit is communicating to you and disregard where the Spirit is leading you in favor of what a man says to you, in favor of what a, where, where a man is trying to lead you. Having no idea that this man who calls himself a prophet and a man of God might be a vessel of wickedness and unrighteousness sent to cause you to fall backwards and be broken. You got to consider these things. Remember, we are fighting a spiritual battle. Just because a per person calls themselves a prophet and they read from the Bible and they say, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, doesn't mean that they are not um, angels of darkness disguising themselves as angels of light. You got to know this. You got to have spiritual discernment to know who to turn away from and who it's okay to listen to. You know them by their fruits. We've been given help in identifying the people who we're supposed to turn away from. All right? He says, and it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah saying, thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou has disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and has not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but came his back and has eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which the Lord did say to thee, eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. Listen, now, now he's not being communicated with directly. Now the word of the Lord is coming to that other prophet. Now, see, he was used to help make this prophet fall backwards. Now what's happened? Now he's going to be used to deliver a, a, a message of truth, a true message from on high because that other prophet, he lost his ability to hear from the most high himself by directly disobeying the command he was given. And so death is pronounced to him and it came to pass 
after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass and behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the prophet dwelt, where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, it is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Therefore, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai hath delivered him unto the lion, which hath torn him and slain him, according to the word of the Lord Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, which he spoke unto him. And he spake to his sons, saying, Saddle me the ass. And they saddled him. And he went and found his carcass cast in the way, and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass. The lion had not eaten the carcass, nor torn the ass. And the prophet took up the carcass of the man of God, and laid it upon the ass and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. Listen, are you paying attention to what's going on here? The same prophet who lied to him and got him killed <laughs> was also used to pronounce judgment against him. And then that same prophet goes out to recover his body and then he mourns over him and buries him. And he laid his carcass in his own grave. And they mourned over him, say, alas, my brother. Wow. And it came to pass after he had buried him that he spake to his sons saying, when I am dead, then bury me in the sepulcher wherein the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the saying which he cried by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the houses of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria shall surely come to pass. After this thing, Jeroboam turned not from his evil way, but made again of the lowest of the people, priests of the high places, whoso whosoever would, he consecrated him, and he became one of the priests of the high places. And this thing became sin unto the house of Jeroboam, even to cut it off and to destroy it from off the face of the earth. The Most High's plan was to cut off Jeroboam and his house from, from the face of the earth. So all of this happened so that the Most High could cut him off. The Most High always has an ultimate plan. He is behind everything. Nothing happens without his say-so. He has to sign off on everything. All right? So he signed off on the old prophet being given the spirit to go lie to him, to cause him to fall. The Most High used the man for a righteous purpose and then used the lying prophet to kill that very same man. So one minute the Most High could be using you to do righteous work and the next minute he can be killing you very easily, right? very easily because of your disobedience. And there are many old prophets who are disobedient to the Most High right now. There are many new prophets that are disobedient, disobeying the Holy Spirit, disobeying the commandments of our power, all while trying to do a righteous work. And although the work they might be doing or trying to do may be righteous, they will be punished, killed for their disobedience despite the righteous work that they have done. They will not be saved by the righteous work which, they, which they've done, but they will be killed by their disobedience. Doesn't matter how much great work you've done. No matter, it doesn't matter, you know, all of the things that you've done in the name of the Lord. Your disobedience will be the death of you. Bottom line, and there are many now calling themselves apostles, disciples, 
prophets and men of God who are also living in sin and disobedience, doing some righteous work, but also doing some wicked work. Learn how to tell these men. Learn how to differentiate between them and those that you should actually listen to. Again, this is a cautionary tale. All right. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 22. Verse 22, we're cutting right to the chase. All right. All of the context of this is not necessary because everything that we need is right in this verse. And Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh said unto him, wherewith to the, to the spirit, because the most high is, is leading, you know, a meeting to have one of these spirits go out and, and cause this man to die who he wants to die. So the spirit you know, they're in their congregation has an idea. He volunteers. He said, I'll do it. So then the most I asked him, how? That's what we're with me. Where with? How? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, who's the he? The most high. Thou shalt persuade him. He's guaranteeing him, guaranteeing him that he's going to succeed. Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now, we know that this is something the Most High would do. So you have to ask yourself, could he be doing this now? Absolutely, he could be. Is he doing this now? Absolutely, he is doing this now. And many don't understand that they are the victims of the lion spirits. They have no understanding that they are the victims of lying spirits. They think they are moving righteously in the favor of the Most High God by the command of the Most High God to the pleasing of our power and that they're going to reap great benefits for it. Not understanding the whole time that they're being destined for death. They're being destined for punishment. All right. This is what the Most High can do, will do, and is doing. We are told in the scriptures by Paul, right, that as, as, as disciples, as apostles, right, we know in part and we prophesy in part. Anybody who truly studies the scriptures knows that the Most High breadcrumbs you in your journey toward him. He doesn't give you the whole loaf of bread. He breaks off a piece and he sets it out. You walk towards him, you pick that piece up, you eat it. Mmm, that tastes good. I like that. Mmm, that feels good. I like the way that feels. I want another piece. So you walk towards him and some more steps. Hey, there's another piece. And you pick it up, you consume it, and you keep doing this. He keeps doing this over and over and over again, leading you toward him with the reward system. It feels amazing when he rewards you with knowledge, with wisdom, with understanding. When he graces you with his presence and you get to feel him close to you, it feels great. It's addicting. He makes you want to keep doing that thing that you did in order to feel that over and over and over again. This is how he deals with you when he loves you. He doesn't give you everything at once. He doesn't give everything to anyone. Otherwise, you would be able to boast, be prideful, arrogant, and men would worship you. The Most High doesn't want this for anybody. So he's not giving anybody everything so that they can do the very thing that he hates. So anybody telling you, listen closely, this is going to ruffle some feathers, but I'm not in the habit of caring. I'm beholden to no man. I have no man's person in respect or in high regard. All right. Anybody telling you that they are the holders, the keepers, the preservers, and the givers of the 
100% truth of God, a lion spirit has descended upon them and their congregation. Without a doubt, a lion spirit has come to them and is, has perverted them. And they are trying to pervert you. Run fast, run far, run now. And while you're running, give all praise, honor, and glory to the heavenly highest, Abba Yahweh, in the name of our beloved King, Savior, and Redeemer, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Be blessed, y'all. Each one, reach one. Shalom.